Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm here at Stay Ready Athletics with the renowned boxing trainer Kevin Gleason, who's not only trained a bunch of people who are coming up in boxing, he's also trained some famous people that you may have heard of yourself. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us on the channel today, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. That was a hell of an intro. Ah, man, absolutely. Thank you for having us here, man. Your facility is beautiful, bro. Uh, before we get started, let the people know where they can find you on social media. Uh, you can find me on social media at uh, Kevin underscore Gleason 7. Awesome, man. Um, and the website for the for your gym is Stay Ready Athletics? So I don't have a website, per se. I have um, I have an online program I do at Stay Ready Training Camp. Cool. So it's, it's attached to the link in my bio. Awesome. So check them out and make sure you guys are following that. While you're there, hit that like, comment, and subscribe button, and make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend as usual. Kevin, um, when you started this in 2014, what was your main goal? What was the main thing that drove you to say, you know what, I got to get out of whatever lane I'm in right now and jump into this boxing training full time? Man, to be honest with you, bro, it was, um, I always loved boxing. You know, I've been boxing since I was a kid on and off amongst other sports. Um, and I was just looking to do something that I enjoyed, you know, with my passion aside from my job. So it was kind of right. like a side hustle kind of mentality, but I loved doing it. I wanted to make a little bit of extra income. Um, and that kind of just drove me into, you know, doing the gym. I was working for a couple of different gyms before I started my own, going out on my own. So for me, it was just about passion. You know, I just loved boxing. I wanted to get in there and, awesome. and start coaching and kind of building my own program and doing things my way, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. And you know what? When when you do venture out on your on your own, it does give you that ability to set schedules, be your own boss, right? 100%. You know, taking certain clients and not have to be forced yep. with certain people. What do you think is the best aspect of getting to work with the clients that you get to work with? I mean, you have to you have to be in the business for a couple of years before you can actually do that. Right. You know, it takes a little while to to establish yourself to where you can pick your clients. In the beginning, I found myself doing um, you know, taking anybody that I could get in there with, right? So right. After a while, I think now at this point, I've been doing, I've been on my own, doing my own business now for about, probably about five, six years where it's been stay ready. Right. Um, now at this point, I can kind of pick who I want to train with, what I enjoy doing. Because as you get older in the business, you want to do things that, that feed your passion, right. you know? Um, so my mentality now at this point, I'm, I'm about to be 37. It's, it's about like, I keep telling myself for the new year, it's, it's harmony over hustle. Mm. So I want to be able to do things that I love being creative in the space that I'm at with this gym and, and training people. So I don't want it to just be a business. I want to be, um, inspired to come in and teach people mm. the craft of boxing, whether it be my fighters or just regular clients. That's great, man. And because and you know what? That's that's a passion that not a lot of trainers have when they get into the sport yeah. of boxing, right? Because not only do you guys, do you specifically work with people who are boxers, whether they're amateurs or just turned pro, right? Or just trying to get in shape. You also work with guys who are bare knuckle fighters. Sure. You also work with guys who are in the MMA world. Yep. So you're, 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 you're casting a pretty wide net when it comes to the talent that you're, uh, you know, allowing to come into your gym. And I think that a lot of fighters professionally and even semi-professionally would appreciate that harmony over hustle. 100%. I think you got to put that on a sweatshirt yeah, or a t-shirt right, or something, something bro. Man. I, it's not mine. I stole from, uh, from what is it, Rob Derdeck. It's all right, talking, man. I'm sure Rob was here. Yeah, he was talking about that in a podcast, and I love that. So that was my new theory going into 2023. Yeah, man. Um, let's talk about what you got coming up in 2023. You and I were kicking it a little bit before we got started. We were talking about one of your fighters that's coming up. Uh, just turned pro at 17, you told me. That's Lorenzo, one of the heavyweights that you train here. Um, talk to me about how you love to see young athletes, especially from South Florida, right? coming into this sport of boxing because usually people tend to go to towards basketball, sure. football, baseball, one of those Absolutely. three sports, right? How does that make you feel to get a young professional like himself into your gym and, and knowing that you got something you can really work with? Well, that's a unique, you know, part of, of coaching. So I met Lorenzo when he was 10. He's 18 now. Um, and he was with me at Pines Pal, the police athletic league. Mm. He just started boxing, him and his brother. And, you know, we started working a little bit together, but to be honest with you, in the beginning, he was just a lazy kid. You know what <laughs> I mean? There's no doubt about it. 
So um, his mom used to press him on me all the time. And I'm like, the kid would come in, he wouldn't have his hand wraps, wouldn't bring his gloves, his boxing equipment. And over the years, you know, we stayed in contact through social media. And I saw as he grew a little bit older, he started taking the sport a little bit more serious. Mm. Um, and then at that point, we had linked up when he was about, I think he was 15, 16. And then he started taking the sport a little bit more serious. And uh, myself and, and my partner, Jeff Ports, kind of started training him a little bit more seriously. And that, like I said, the unique part was seeing him go from a boy into a man um, or a young man. I won't go, right, I won't go right. that he's far. 18. He's not that he's much a of a man. Yeah, yeah, he's still a baby. <laughs> um, he made his professional debut at 17 years old. Uh, he wasn't legally allowed to fight in America until you're 18. So he right. had his first uh, three pro fights in Mexico. So that's the, the unique part of that is being able to see people make that transition. If you're lucky enough from a young kid to a you know a young man or you know t seeing a regular fitness client go from someone that doesn't know how to throw a punch into you know knowing the, the fundamentals and the, the the craft of boxing yeah and being able to defend themselves get into shape 100%. and anything that helps gain some type of positivity Absolutely. in their life man um you know like like we were talking about boxing is not a sport or even mma or let's just call it fight combat sports right combat sports is not something that a lot of kids tend to gravitate towards right nope. So when you do get that opportunity, is it like, a, man, I got to keep this guy real close to me? Do I let him explore the world of fighting? What's the best lane for him? How do you so, figure that out for fighters? Here's the cynical part of, of that from my, my point of view. You know, boxing is a poor man's sport. You know, so when you get a kid who's super talented, I've been around so long, you can get a kid, you know, they're kids. Yeah. I was the same way. I started boxing at 13, and I wanted to play in two years. I, by the time I was 15, I wanted to play hockey. Then right. I wanted to play baseball, basketball. So when you get a talented kid, it's, it's hard. You know, one of my mentors once told me, don't fall in love with your fighters because mm. – Especially at that young age, they're going to want to, you know, play different sports sometimes, girlfriends, right. friends, <laughs> school stuff, whatever it may be. It's hard. It's a delicate stage because you don't – it's like having a baby. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't want to push a kid too much to one thing because then they could, you know, grow to hate that, you know. So it's kind of – you flirt with that line of pushing them in the right direction but not overdoing it. So when you have a – time, and there's, there's been plenty of people that I've seen that are God-gifted – have amazing talented boxing. Tons of talent down here that in can South come Florida. In, yeah, come in. It's back, exactly. We're in South Florida, but you have to kind of coast them right, you know, at least from my perspective. I don't True. try to push anybody too hard on it, especially at a young age, because you don't know what's driving them to the gym. If Eventually, they might grow to dislike the sport or they've picked up another sport. So it's a balance, man. You know, it's a balancing act. You don't want to push anybody too hard on it. For sure. And, and I think that's something that you do well, right? Because I've seen you with uh, your fighters, right? When when I saw you um, being the trainer for Deja, right? Who's a... Dia. The Dia. Dia David, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a great boxer, a great, great boxer, a great guy in general, Shout out to right? man, Dia Davis, baby. Shout out to him, man. He's a great guy. Um, and, and, you know, you see him... And the relationship you guys have, it's, it's really close. Oh and then I, I see your program with Stay Ready Athletics yeah. and the guys that you've worked with. What is it that, that made you fall in love with training? Because it's really a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship that you're getting sure. to build with somebody that you may not end up getting the best out of the relationship in the end, but you still get some type of worth. I mean, for me, I, I love boxing. You know, I was obsessed with it, especially when I first started doing it at a uh, more full-time base. Mm. Um, just getting better even as a coach that was my obsession was just getting better and better and better I wanted to be one of the best coaches I could ever be um you know so I think that that was more so what I, I try to you know push on on anybody that I'm working with is just being the best that you could possibly be sure um with Dia was a unique experience because Dia was older he was right. coming out of retirement six years I wanted to work with Dyer for a long time I was glad that I was able to do that especially before he officially retired you know so Dyer knew everything there was to know about boxing he'd been boxing forever yeah you know so when we got to link up it was more of we had you know um identical styles in coaching um and I, it was just about kind of putting that together and just getting him sharp and prepared for this fight. So, you know, that experience was just a 12-week experience. I love being in there with a brilliant mind like Dai. He's been mm -hmm. around, you know, the best of the best. So um, that was just an experience I enjoyed because I was able to mix it up with somebody who was like-minded to me. He was able to motivate me because at times you need motivation. Absolutely. He was able to motivate me as a fighter and, and a coach and, and vice versa. And I think that was the experience that I wanted from that 
um, was just to sometimes you need that kick, that extra Absolutely. motivation. So it was fun to get in there with him. And, and like I said, we put in 12 weeks of a hell of a camp. He did a tremendous job stopping that guy in the first round. It was an you know, amazing fight. Got him amazing out of the easy. Fight. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the relationships between trainers and fighters. What is it that goes through your mind as a trainer when you're leading up to the fight, right? Like, because game planning for the opponent is easy, right? You study a bunch of film, not necessarily easy, but that's the hard work that you're putting in, right? How do you feel when it gets closer to the fight day, weigh-ins, right? Because everybody always focus on yeah. how the boxer feels or the fighter feels. Sure. Well, how, how is it for you as a trainer to say, man, I, I, did I get him ready? Did I did it, do everything possibly? How All does that things. feel? All those things go to your mind. You know, it's stressful. Um, you know, you, you, you definitely go through, I think the same emotions that a fighter kind of goes through. Did I do everything that I could have done as a trainer? Did we leave every stone? You know, did we, we make sure that we left no stone unturned? Um, and then, you know, a lot of it, you're leaving it up, not to chance per se, but a fight is a fight, you True. know? So you can True. only hope that your fighter comes in there and, and executes everything that you worked on. So yeah, it's, it's a super stressful business, you mm. know? Um, people don't think about that. So yeah, it's, I think it's the same emotions as a fighter to a certain extent, you just want to make sure that they're completely ready to execute what they need to do, that you've done everything that you can do on their part. So it's a, it's a very stressful situation, uh, especially with, like you were asking, like bare knuckle and boxing, because right. anything can happen in those sports. You Absolutely. Know? Or, um, bare knuckle and um, MMA. MMA, I'm sorry. Boxing, you know, not that you know, but you feel a little bit different. You know, bare knuckle, anybody can win that fight. I always True. say that. It's it's you know a flip of the coin you know what i mean i can go in there and have the better fighter he gets caught with a bare knuckle he's going out for sure same thing in mma i you know that was a tough transition for me from boxing to mma is i could prepare somebody as best i can boxing wise but they could run into a kick knee takedowns whatever it may be true true now as as the fight progresses are you more taking mental notes are you trying to do encouragement or are you really just studying what your fighter is doing versus what his opponent's doing both Mm. You know, I'm trying to uh, see what my fighters executing well, what they're trying to set up on possibly, uh, what they're doing good or what they're leaving open, anything that we can execute on or take advantage of, what my fighter needs to uh, tighten up on. You know, it's, it's very fast, I say, and you only have a minute to make those True. adjustments. So, you know, when you're in the corner with your fighter, you want to keep it really simple. So you're trying to um, take in as much information as you can and being able to put it out to your fighter as quick and as simple as you can, you know, cause you can't tell a fighter, you can't, inf you know, information overload. Yeah, them. you can't hit them with I a can't, paragraph. Like, hey, look, you need to go out there, throw a jab, <laughs> left hook, right hand, step off, you know, you have to keep it very simple. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything in the corner, you know. Got it. And what about when you, when you see that your fighter is maybe not focused, right? What, what's the message? Do sometimes, is it more, Technical in is camp it more, or in the fight? In the fight, I'm, I'm interested in the fight because, like, in the camp, you can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship sure. and kind of go off of the camaraderie that's built, right? As the training camp goes, but in the fight, like you said, it's a fight, right? Things can change on the fly. How do you kind of make those adjustments? Are you more of a mental notes type of guy, or are you a verbal that, notes type at, of guy? At those moments, you have to be verbal. You know, what mm. I mean, you're gonna have to, you know, kind of, you know, yell at your uh, your fighter. You have to, whatever it is that gets them motivated, gets them locked in and focused. Got it. So, I mean, you can only hope that there are those cases where a fighter is just so, you know, uh, headstrong and and has blinders on. He's not really paying attention True. to what he needs to be focusing on. Um, I've been in those moments. You know, a fight is a uh, it's like being, I always say, it's like being in uh, the Wizard of Oz. You're in that tornado, everything. You're just dodging <laughs> chairs and all kinds of things. So right. sometimes they get caught up in that storm. Sometimes you have to let them know. You know, you have to verbally yell at them. I've seen coaches smack other fighters in the, in the corner, you know. Yeah, it's a great So it, sometimes you have to be that motivational coach. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What, what has been the most hectic situation that you've experienced in a fight when it comes to being in the corner? Where you can say, this shit was crazy, but we made it, and my guy came out on top. Oh. Uh, Probably I I, uh, I work with Blake Davis. Shout out to uh, Blake my man, Davis, bad Blake Davis. That guy's a beast, and um, we're gonna be there uh, January fourteenth at his promotion. At his promotion, yeah, yes, um, sir. There will be. He blood. got dropped in a fight once, and there's a lot more with Blake. It's you know Blake is a friend. He's like a, a, a you know a family member of mine. So mm. there's a lot of love there. He got dropped in his fight. Uh, I think it was the second round, and um, there was a lot of motion. Obviously in that corner, he got dropped. 
he's, you know, again, he has the blinders on like a guy dropped. It was, it was a lot of excitement and right. he came out and he, not, he actually knocked that kid's teeth out the next round. We just wow. had to give him that motivational speech, you know? Wow. But he came out on top. That was probably the most emotion I felt. Anytime I've, I've cornered six or six or seven bare knuckle fights now. Anytime you're in one of those corners, it's intense, you know what I mean? Because it's bare knuckle, it's it's insane, so. Absolutely. You know, I mean, all- we were there for BKFC 34, and um, that night was electric, right? Bad yeah. Blake Davis had uh-huh. an amazing finish that night. You could Com- always pray on those, get them done real fast, Absolutely. you know? With the minimal damage. Uh, sustained, minimal damage, right? you know? Perfect, yeah. You could always pray on those moments. Yeah, and but then we also saw a couple of wars that night that went five rounds, yep. four rounds, you know what I mean? So it's, it's always a tough situation to see the difference in how you have to coach between bare knuckle sure. because it's already like already different than MMA because you're throwing kicks and stuff coming up from the bottom uh-huh. where maybe your eyes aren't focused on that to where you originated from which is boxing yeah let's talk a little bit about stay ready athletics and your virtual program what motivated you to start that and what's how I think that's a great thing because it makes it easier for people to kind of do it from their own home when they can't come to the gym or whatnot sure. and, and pretty much do it wherever they go uh for me for that it was it was I wanted to reach out to um you know, more broad, um, more people, basically. Mm. Um, I want to be able to get anybody anywhere. And I, at, at the point I'm at now, I've, I think I'm in 19 different countries. You know, I just wanted to be able to get my product awesome, across. Bro. So what it had kind of for me was uh, social media was blowing up. I noticed that, you know, people were, I was getting a lot of messages, DMs and stuff like that, a lot of questions. So there was a couple of different things. One, I can't be in the gym coaching forever. 24-7, you know? right. Yeah, my you body's got family, just, yeah, you got got family and body, yeah, my body's just not going to hold up either. Right. So I wanted to be able to make an income for myself outside of being in the gym. That was, you know, that was first and foremost. And right. then um, it was to reach as many people as I could and to share my passion with as many people as I could. So that's what made me start that digital program was to be able to coach as many people that I can get to, you know, um, all over the world. I think that's a great thing, man, because like you said, it, it, it allows people to reach it at their own pace, at their own time, wherever they may be, right? Mm-hmm. And still get a high quality exactly. training session from a gentleman like yourself, man. Exactly. I love that part of it. Like that was like anything you have to make pivots in any business. I loved being able to do that, you know, being able to meet new people all over the world, being able to speak with them and, and, and interact with them and teach them, you know, my craft the way I do it. True, true, true. Now, let's talk a little bit more about your craft, man. Who would you say is your best prospect to this date? Lorenzo Medina. Lorenzo Medina. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think he's just, his style and my style match up real well. I mean, he's only 18 years old. His ceiling is, you know, I think me and him match up really well, you know, style from fighter to coach. So, he's probably my best prospect right now and there's not a lot of heavyweights so that's a very clear lane yeah. for him to get into right and, I, yeah. and actually and do some damage like i said he's super young 18 years old he hasn't even grown into his man strength yet mm. um i i think that he's probably the best defensive defensively sound heavyweight out there so yeah he's um he's definitely you know my best prospect you guys got to look out for him absolutely he's fighting man. next saturday january 14th there will be blood <laughs> by bad Blake productions come on y'all get yeah. with the program um let's talk a little bit about boxing right now we, we we were discussing how the state of boxing has changed a lot from where you and i really got to see it um from his glory days prime days to maybe a little bit more watered down in the Business, late 90s yeah. right to what it is right now sure. right where it's way more commercial than the sport of boxing how does that make you feel as a trainer because you know you're, you're actually putting your heart and soul and passion into this and there's other people out here trying to make this like a Absolutely. glitz and glamour yeah. hollywood type yeah. thing there's a cynical side of me on that other side of business yeah um it's just uh, we were talking about the, the gervonta davis fight that's coming up that's right um I think that for me personally, you know, I want to see the best fight the best, best compete with the best, you know, and right now what you're seeing a lot of is you're seeing one really good fighter beat up on somebody that's like a, a B or C fighter, caliber fighter, and then they're, they're calling it gold, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm going to pay $70 to watch an A-plus fighter fight a, a C fighter or a B fighter. Tough. And because tough. you did a great job promoting it, I'm supposed to be excited about it. I just, I'm not into that, you know. Um, and we were talking about you know, before we started the Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia fight. And even Spence and, um, yeah, Spence and Eric, Crawford. I mean, those Crawford. guys, those guys should have fought years ago. Right. You know, and it, it's insane to me that this is still going on, that they haven't fought the business side of things. I don't, 
I don't know who doesn't want to fight who or wh- who, what, you know, promoter or whatever. It's just, it's just too many, too many hats. You know what I mean? In right. the mix. And, uh, that definitely adds like a, again, a cynical side from a trainer's sure. perspective because you want to see that happen. For sure. Now you're watching, you know, Terrence Crawford fight some guy we don't know or Earl Spence fight some guy we don't know or some guy that's over the hill, older, you know what right. I mean? It, it necessarily that doesn't make sense there. to me, right. you know? So doesn't it belong. It definitely is it's hard to be a fan all the time of the state of boxing currently. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, that that definitely, for me as a fan, I want to see the best fight the best. And I, I know everybody does, but it's hard to, um, I understand it's hard to make that happen all the time. True. And, and no fighter can fight they they'd be brain dead by the time they're thirty years old if they fought the top caliber guys back True. to back to back to back. But we got to see fights that make sense these days. You yeah, know, a little bit more than you know what we're seeing right now. No, for sure. And I think that it, it also would bring back that entertainment value that's Absolutely. missing in boxing, Absolutely, right? Because yeah. watching the best fight the best are, are things that anybody wants to see, right? Yeah. Like even for your prospect, you wouldn't want him to fight a guy who's ten grades below sure. him, five grades below him. 100%. No, you would want somebody him fight like somebody anything, at his level a, or be above. There's a above. learning lesson. Like when a guy is coming up, they they have to make those fights that are necessary for their. Their, them to grow and get better and better and, and have their their lessons and their you know whatever they're learning in the ring at that time but right. you know when you're a, a world class fighter and you're fighting guys that I've never heard of it's it's ridiculous <laughs> you know what I mean and I think that's why we were talking about earlier why MMA is is you know kind a of taking of over up. right and um and boxing is kind of being left behind you know for s- reasons like that in MMA the best usually fight the best. Where in boxing, it's like I said, you got an A-plus caliber fighter, a world champion fighting some guy that, you know, we have no idea who he is. Right, may not have been deserved of that exactly. uh, that title right. shot or that opportunity, you know what I mean? And um, it's, it just kind of sucks because maybe it, I've, I've always felt like that's kind of what held back boxing becoming that next sport sure. in South Florida, right? Because like we said, there's Absolutely. tons of talent down here, plenty of people who are... Maybe not the best suited for basketball, football, baseball, whatever, but they can make a lane for themselves in, in, in fight sports, 100%. especially in boxing. Yeah. Um, in 2023, what, what are one of the main things that you'd like to accomplish? Like, what are some of your goals that you would have for some of your fighters, right? Let's talk about Lorenzo specifically and um, for yourself as well. For me, like I said, uh, harmony over hustle. I want to make sure I'm doing Credible, great work. You know, when I'm coming in here, I'm giving the best product I can give to everybody that's in here. I would love to go undefeated with anybody that competes, any of my fighters that fight up. You know, I would like to, you know, do that as well. Um, But that's something that's big for me this year. I said that, you know, I'd rather avoid taking seven, eight sessions, personal training sessions, and cut them down to, you know, four or five where I'm giving the best version of myself to, you know, whoever it is that I'm training at that time. So that's massive for me. That's a huge goal for 2023 for me is, is balance, making sure that I'm, I'm giving everybody that comes through my door, the best version of Kevin that I can. Awesome, man. And what about for your fighter, Lorenzo? What, what do you think that you should want for him for 2020 or what would you like to see him accomplish? I mean, you know, Lorenzo's in that stage. Like I said, he's 18 years old. He just turned 18 in October. So you want to make him, you want to make sure he's moving around, moving correctly. Mm. You know, um, I would like him to obviously, you know, he's fighting January 14th. If he can get a fight, you know, two months, I would like to see him get signed by a major promotion. I think that would probably be the biggest goal for for us with Lorenzo is just seeing him get signed to a major promotion, getting a good deal for himself. Um, that's probably the biggest goal I could have for somebody like that. And he's know? definitely got the momentum to, to accomplish something like that. Just doing, year. just overall doing what I love doing with people I enjoy, you know, and I love, you know, that's I love my that, biggest man. goal, man. I love that, man. You know, I wanted to ask you something because you and I, we're, we're, we're the old heads in the room, yeah. right? Shout out to Joel. But... <laughs> When, when it comes to boxing, right, you are kind of like a historian like I am, right? So we like to have watch and watch replays of the older sure. fighters and whatnot. Who is your favorite fighter, named, not named Mike Tyson? Because for me, it's marvelous Marvin Hagler. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of interested from your perspective, who's your favorite fighter? Roy Jones Jr., baby. Ooh. Yeah. Roy Jones is the reason I felt like I got into boxing. Him and Muhammad Ali. Man. But Roy Jones is, I would watch him on, you know, as much as I could, and I watch him on clips of YouTube just trying to, you know, study him as much as possible. I love Roy Jones Jr. Um, a lot of people would probably be like, hey, that's not the most fundamental guy that you want to, you know. Man went a whole round yeah, without getting listen, hit. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, Roy Jones Jr. is my favorite fighter of all time. You know, I think that he was a big reason that I 
stuck in stuck around in boxing. That's you what's up. I mean, yeah, I mean look, he's a Florida boy, right? Yeah. Like, come out here putting on great performances, Yo, knocking people I mean, out, just rapping at the same disgusting, time. Disgusting, man, disgusting. I always say he was like the Allen Iverson of, uh, of Hell boxing. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? That's just a great comparison. Disgusting, super athletic, super fun to watch. Yeah, he's he's definitely my favorite fighter. I mean, y'all must have forgot, right? Yeah, I think yeah, Rick yeah, is right. gonna love he that. Had a great answer. album, yeah. Come on, y'all. Come yeah, on. So yeah, no, for sure. And look, you know, like that's a dude that went in just so much respect to 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 that pick, man. Because Roy Jones is a dude who did it until he love him. couldn't, yep. right? Was at forty yep. something years old out there fighting guys and winning belts. You know what I mean? Like up 100%. fighting the, the the best of the best. That's a great pick, man. You know, and and that's one of the dudes who embodies that old school spirit yeah. of a Marvin Hagler, exactly. of a you know. Sugar Ray Leonard, all those guys, you know yep. what I'm saying? Tommy and Hitman Herons, guys Love, who were willing to fight the yeah. best. Yep, for sure. You know? And that was a different era of boxing where yeah. you enjoyed it a little bit more because it was, you know, you're you're watching a product that makes sense, man. I always Facts. say, imagine if, you know, the Lakers and Golden State made it to the Western Conference Finals and they decided, like, you know what? I don't want to play them. We don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to play each other. That doesn't make sense right now financially. We're going to go with the We're going to go play the, Dallas. The last seed. Right. Yeah, we're we're going to go play Dallas. Dallas. We're going to play like Orlando. Like, give us, yeah, give us the Kings or something like that, you know, and then we'll then we'll think about it. Like, nah. it doesn't make sense this era. That's what I yeah. always say about boxing. So it's, you know, there's no reason that these guys shouldn't be fighting each other, period. They're young. They're in their primes. All these guys out there, you know, these fights need to make more sense, you know. Yeah, and it's man. us as consumers and fans who need to stand against that, you know, instead of Facts. purchasing some of these pay-per-views. Go see a local yeah. fighter. Yeah, go see a local fighter. Go see things that make sense you know yeah man go see a local fighter like lorenzo yeah who's like gonna my be man there. lorenzo that this big saturday. production next saturday um january 14th make sure to get your tickets and um come check out the great work that's built on being put on by this man right here kevin i, I can't that, thank you man. enough for having appreciate us in your absolutely. gym man um let the people know one more time where they can find you on social media so you media. can find me on instagram at uh kevin underscore gleason seven um and i have all my links from there from my youtube to uh my digital training um, I don't have TikTok. No, I don't do anything no, no, else. Really. You know, that's it, man. That's that's the easiest way to find me. Awesome, man. And if you need some good training, check out Stay Ready Athletics. It's going to be the best thing that you can possibly do for yourself in 2023 if you're looking to get in shape. Kevin, thank you so much for joining Appreciate us again. All, man. Make sure you guys are hitting that like button. Drop a comment. Show some love to Kevin and his program. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Until next time, peace.